Okay, well, uh, good morning, everyone. For, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Harvey Hirschman, and I wanted to welcome you to uh, this year's Mastery Award uh, lectures. So the first thing I want to do is I want to tell you a little bit about the Mastery Prize. This is an award that started in 1996, so we're in the 19th annual Mastery Award uh, recipients. Um, and it's awarded to scientists who, who made substantial uh, recent contributions both to biomedical sciences in a basic way and to advancement uh, in, in health. Uh, Shal Masri, Shal and Mira Masri, uh, are the founders of the Masri Award. Shal is a, a professor of, uh, of um, nephrology at USC uh, who established this award, as I say, in 1996. Uh, he's part of the uh, 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 Keck School of Medicine over at uh, USC. Um, the, the way this works is that you hear the list of Mastery Prize winners starting in 1996. I joined the selection committee, the scientific selection committee in 2000. So I've been involved in the, um, the selection of all of these folks. The way this works is each year a scientific theme is chosen and uh, the laureates are then selected by this committee of, of faculty from USC primarily, and also uh, myself and one other person, Joel Koppel, also a nephrologist from uh, UCLA. Um, it's a pretty busy time for the speakers. On Thursday, they spend the day over at USC giving seminars and talking to students and postdocs. Then Friday and Thursday night, there's a, a very nice dinner. I must say, we went to Spago's last night. Um, and then, um, they spend the whole day over here uh, today, or most of the day, and there's another dinner. And then tomorrow, there's a really nice award ceremony that's held at the Beverly Hills um, Council Chamber, which is a beautiful room. And there's an award and, and uh, short public lectures, um, and then uh, a, a luncheon at the Four Seasons, and then we pour them back onto an airplane and, and they, they go back home. Um, so uh, we. We like to think we've selected good folks. Uh, the people in red here are the people who won the Mastery Award and then subsequently uh, won uh, Nobel Prizes. I think, I think we do, uh, if one establishes that as a criterion of doing a good job of choosing, uh, then I think we're ahead of the Lasker folks in choosing who, uh, who, who uh, has a, does a good job. Now, um, this year's uh, winners are for CRISPR-Cas, um, and the laureates are uh, Felipe Horvath, Emmanuel Charpentier. Did I get it right? Good, okay. And uh, Jennifer Doudna. Now, for those of you who look carefully at the announcement, uh, Dr. Doudna is not going to be here today. So both um, Drs. Horvath and uh, Charpentier will, will present lectures. But um, Dr. Doudna, in fact, will be here um, in December as, I think, the medical school uh, annual uh, lecturer. So um, for me, I, I'm just going to take a few minutes. We, we only have two speakers, so I'm going to take two minutes to tell you a personal note. Um, for me, this was a particularly uh, interesting and, and um, appropriate award and a particular pleasure to participate in. And I, I may infringe on some of Dr. Horvath's uh, introduction. Um, so. Bacteria, as many of you know, are invaded by viruses, bacteriophage, and uh, it turns out they develop restrictions uh, to particular, or they have restrictions to particular invaders. This was originally shown, I think, by Salvador Luria with uh, lambdaphage, which could infect one strain of bacteria at five orders of magnitude, three to five orders of magnitude, better than it could another. What they found was that there were uh, restriction enzymes that cleave DNA at the of the invader at specific, relatively short sequences, as all of you know, and the bacteria that produce these specific restriction enzymes um, also produce a way to prevent their own DNA from being cleaved, usually by, by methylation, for example. Now, um, the reason I'm telling you this is that <clears throat> the first restriction enzymes were described by Daisy Dussois and Werner Arber in, I think it was 1962 or 63, um, and I had the best graduate school course I ever took was a seminar course in which the papers of Daisy Dussois and, 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 and Werner Aber and, and later Messelson and, and uh, Ham Smith and people like that also working on these enzymes 
uh, but we were, we were, I had a seminar course in, as my first year in graduate student school, 1963, um, you can do the arithmetic, um, <laughs> and uh, what we did was we read the papers that were coming out at that time as a group of students and discussed them, and it was like one of the most exciting and interesting times, I think, in, in the history of biology. Um, and in, in 1987, Dr. Horvath and the people that he was associated with basically did the same thing with um, the Cas enzymes and the CRISPR storage system. So, you know, bacteria have what would, you could consider as an innate immune system, the restriction enzymes, okay, and then they have an adaptive immune system. When they see an invader, they figure out a way to take a piece of its DNA and, and use that as a, as a uh, uh, representative so that they can now kill the invader if it comes a second time. And, and the, the seminal paper that Dr. Horvath published in 1987 explained how bacteria do this. And it's just a, a, a pleasure to, to, um, to read that paper um, and to, to uh, see this kind of thing develop uh, over again. And then Dr. and uh, doctors uh, uh, Doudna and Charpentier were at the time the, in the mid mid uh, late uh, uh, 2000 years, also studying CRISPR-Cas. And I guess you you met in 2011, I think, and began a collaboration in which they worked out the biochemistry and enzymology of how this works, and also showed that not just cleaving bacterial DNA, but in their seminal paper published in 2011, um, they showed that you could use this to target and cleave um, any, any sequence. So this gave people in the field a really powerful tool to, to cleave uh, DNA at any site in a very simple way. Um, and as things continue to work out in the future, to also to be able to replace and add in uh, new sequences, although this I think is still, I presume you'll talk about trying to do this and how to, how to optimize homologous recombination and things like that. Um, now, starting next week, I'm going to go back and revisit history and teach a seminar course on the, the history and the development of CRISPR-Cas with a graduate student seminar, identical in essence, in principle, to the one that I took uh, what is it, 46 years ago or something like that. So I'm really looking forward to this. Now, I would, I would just want to say also that I personally consider the CRISPR-Cas technology, I, the audience here is, is a, a, a tribute to that, that uh, the applications are really, um, the, I think the popular term now is disruptive for biology and, and medicine. I think they're as, as, as seminal and disruptive as the discovery and elucidation of restriction enzymes, monoclonal antibodies, polymerase chain reaction, homologous recombination in stem cells, and the development of uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. I think, I think CRISPR-Cas takes uh, its place in that pantheon of striking uh, technology uh, developments and applications, uh, as we'll see in the future. Okay, so, as I said, um, the laureates are um, doctors uh, Horvath, Chapentier, and Doudna, um, this is really an international group. Um, Dr. Downer will not be here, as I said today, but will be giving a lecture in December. Dr. Horvath, Horvath uh, is uh, from France, received his undergraduate degree in bio, uh, the undergraduate, uh, equivalent of our undergraduate degree in biochemistry, and a master's in 1996 and a PhD in cell and molecular biology. If you go back and look at the list, I think that uh, he is unique in recipients of this award. It is my impression, I'd have to go through it very carefully, but it is my impression that every one of the pre prior uh, uh, laureates for the Mastery Prize comes either from uh, a university or a nonprofit research foundation. Um, Dr. Uh, Horvath is unique in this regard in that when he received his PhD, he told me he had an internship at Rhoda, which is a, a, a food company, and he established, they asked him to come and establish a molecular biology um, program uh, at the food industry. And he'll, he'll take you through the history of this, but it turns out Rhoda begat 
Danisco, Danisco become, became DuPont, and he'll take you through that. But he's been associated with the food industry for um, his entire professional career postgraduate school. And the, the work he did that he'll describe to you was for very practical reasons to, to um, understand how bacteria that are involved in fermentation become resistant to bacteriophage that, that, that kill them. And the, the point I want to make here is that this is yet another example of how fundamental basic science working in a context that really has nothing to do with medicine often generates the most important observations that um, contribute to both our understanding of biology and also to applications, uh, therapeutic applications in medicine. And it's just, uh, I really wanted uh, Felipe to share in this prize because I think that the fundamental biology that um, he described is exemplary of the way in which research that can be directed or research that can be in investor in investigator initiated but not targeted toward biomedical problems very often leads to the solutions of, of uh, biomedical problems. Dr. Charpentier uh, is also originally from France but received and received her PhD from um, the uh, Pasteur Institute. She spent a lot of time in the United States at a number of different places, Rockefeller and NYU and the Langone and St. Jude's also, I think, for a period of over about five years before returning to, to Europe, um, at uh, first in Vienna and then to Umea. Umea? Yeah, yeah, I think to Vienna and then to Umea and then uh, to uh, Germany. In, in 2013, she became a professor at the Hanover Medical School. And just recently, in 2015, she became the director of a new Max Planck Institute of Infection um, in Berlin. The seminal paper that she published with Dr. Doudna in 2011 um, demonstrated that the combination of Cas9 and guide RNAs could be used to cut genomes of almost any organism at almost any place in a directed way. <clears throat> and thus, you know, and in, in, as a result, we, we uh, now have a remarkable tool in which there's just been an extraordinary explosion, testimonies from the number of people who are here. So researchers worldwide now are employing this method to, to uh, manipulate the genomes of cell lines, of plants, of animals, you name it. And so with that, um, why don't we move on? You can stop listening to me, and you can actually listen to the good science. Um, Felipe will, will start, and um, I just want to welcome him to uh, UCLA again and uh, congratulate him on the Mastery Award. Thank you. <laughs>